Hello and welcome to this latest edition of Tech of the Month, where we show you some of the coolest, nichest and newest tech that has recently rolled its way through the bike radar doors. This month we have a radical POC TT helmet, a TRP drivetrain, a super light Canyon road bike, these incredibly jazzy shoes. I honestly don't really want to ride them and get them all dirty. Anyway, uh, first we'll start with Felix, who has Physique's new range of saddles. Take it away, Felix. Thanks, Liam. So, yep, I've got a whole load of the latest saddles from Physique, who are known for their more high-end components and shoes. Now, before I take a closer look at these saddles, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on our next one. I've got the new Aliante and Antares saddles here. Both models have been around for years now, but aside from the fact that they're now called the Tempo Aliante and Vento Antares, they look pretty similar. In the case of the Tempo Aliante saddles, Physique says that it's worked to improve rider comfort during long days in the saddle. The Vento Antares, on the other hand, focuses on racing and has been modified to be suitable for a wide range of positions. So, other than the name change, what is new? Well, let's start with the Aliante saddles. As I mentioned, these are designed to deliver long ride comfort, which I'm always looking to improve on. Like the existing Aliante saddles, the new model continues to feature a slightly sort of waved upper profile. However, Physique says the new shape has been slightly flattened, which it says allows for more even pressure distribution across the saddle. There are three versions available and they all feature nylon shells, which the brand says allows the outer wings of the saddle to flex. We're told this should reduce the potential for chafing and rubbing. Above the shell, the saddles feature a dual density foam padding. A firmer layer is added here at the rear for added support and a softer padding at the front. Physique has also included a pressure relieving cutout which is designed to promote blood flow. The range topping R1 has carbon rails. The mid-range R3 has the brand's Kium alloy rails, while the entry-level R5 has so-called S alloy rails. Each one is available in 145 or 155 millimeter widths and are all 277 millimeters long. Naturally, the lightest is the carbon railed R1, which costs £179.99 or $224.99. The cheaper R5 costs £104.99 or $129.99. So £75 or $105 is quite a difference there. Well, let's see how much they weigh. Okay, so first up, the R1. High spec carbon railed model is 177 grams. And the R5, is 235 grams. And if you're interested, the R3 mid-range model comes in at 215 grams. Right, so if Kai and I have done our maths right, that suggests a 58 gram saving. Now looking at the Vento Antares saddles, and these are aimed at road racers and keen sporty riders who often favor a more aggressive position. The overall shape is much flatter, which in theory lends itself to those riders with greater flexibility and don't require the same amount of support. Now, I'm not the most flexible rider out there, but personally, I would take all the extra comfort I can get. Compared to the old version of this saddle, there has been a few changes. So first up is a slightly wider nose, which along with this cutout is said to eliminate pressure hotspots. The modified shape is also said to increase saddle interaction with your sit bones, which Physique says leads to improved power transfer and pedaling efficiency. So those of us with a speedy disposition, this one might tickle your pickle, but such performance claims should be taken with a very big pinch of salt because saddle requirements are so specific to the individual and wrapped up in all sorts of bike fit considerations as well. Now I have to say you should check out our buyer's guide to saddles. The link for that is in the card above or in the description, especially if you're thinking about splashing some cash. The R1, R3 and R5 versions are all available in 140 or 150 millimeter widths and are 268 millimeters long. Uh, so that is actually a little bit shorter than the Aliante saddle. That's enough about saddles for a minute, but if you want to know even more about these ones, then keep your eyes peeled over on bikeradar.com 
And now it's over to Liam. Now, on to my shoes now, and we have Specialized's latest take on a gravel shoe. The Recon as a range has been about for a few years now, but this new version takes some of the tech from the S-Works Torch Road Shoe. Now, I've got them and they fit my feet perfectly, so I really do have high hopes for these. A revised last, that's the kind of shape that the shoe is made around, now features a slightly wider midfoot area. Then underneath, you've got a similar tread design to that that you'll find on the S-Works Recon cross-country mountain bike shoes. That's all very well and good, but I want to focus on the things that Specialized says makes these gravel specific. Many of us, when we go for a gravel ride, We'll get to a bit that we can't ride. Here in the west of England, that's about every 100 yards. Now, walking in most cross-country mountain bike shoes isn't actually that nice. That's why we've now got a market for gravel shoes. Anyway, Specialized has used what it calls stride toe flex technology. That is to say, in non-marketing speak, that the soles are more compliant than the race shoes. It's an effort to make the shoes comfortable for long days on a bike. So if you're a bike packer or you just like to go on long adventure rides, they might be sounding quite good to you. Now these uppers are perforated synthetic material and to deal with all of that walking, you've got protection right around the base where the upper meets the sole. That sole is then protected by the Slipknot tread. That is a great name. This is a continuous piece and it rises beside the cleats to give you a nice wide pedaling platform, which should improve pedaling comfort and stability. I just think they look really good. Oh, and thankfully, they're a huge amount cheaper than the S-Works race shoes. Uh, those will set you back like 385 quid, whereas these come in at 200 pounds. Still pricey, but a lot better. Right, I've got to pass over to Simon now. I really hope he's not still wearing that helmet. <coughs> mm. <coughs> Sorry. So this is the ProSen Pox latest time trial helmet. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't this a little bit silly? Well, yeah, but let's be honest. Time trialing isn't really the coolest sport in the world anyway. And if you want to win races, then sometimes you need to make sacrifices. Like many of the top helmet brands are doing nowadays, Pox says that the ProSen is an addition to its range rather than a replacement for its existing TT helmets, the Cerebel and the Tempor. Of course, those of you with eagle eyes for this sort of thing may have noticed that the ProSen is essentially a mashup of those two lids. Now it takes the more traditional overall shape of the Cerebral, but it throws in features from the more radical Tempor, such as the large front vents and a very subtle flare along the rear side edges. The vents are particularly interesting as Pock says that these improve cooling and reduce drag. According to the Swedish brand, these vents make use of the Venturi effect, which is the reduction in pressure that occurs when a fluid passes through a choke point to draw in air through the helmet. As it flows through, heat transfers from your head to the airflow and cools you as it exits via the exhaust port at the rear. The reason this is beneficial from an aero perspective though is that these vents are placed in an area that would otherwise see a fairly large buildup of pressure as you try to push through the air. Allowing the air to flow through the helmet, Pock says, reduces this buildup of resistance and ultimately means that you can ride faster for less effort. The tail of the ProSen is also chopped off, which is designed to reduce the drag penalty for putting your head down during a race. So, when we asked Pock which helmet is fastest, it said it would depend on the rider and their position on the bike. According to Pock, getting the best out of the Tempor typically requires a precise body position and technique, which basically means you need to have your head in the right position and be able to hold it there all of the time. Now indeed, when we tested the Tempor back in 2014, it did prove extremely fast, both in the wind tunnel and in the real world. However, in the real world, our tester also found it to be incredibly sensitive to changes in head position. As a result, it was a tricky helmet to recommend as an option for riders who can't optimize their bike fit around it or aren't able to hold a consistent head position while racing. 
Now the last trick up the ProSense sleeve is the visor. As normal with POC TT helmets, you get both a clear and dark visor in the box, plus a nifty hard shell case for keeping it safe during transport. The cool thing about the visor though, is that it can be adjusted in and out from the helmet by 10 millimeters. POC says this feature enables riders to improve the ventilation of the helmet and prevent the visor fogging up while waiting on the start line of a race. In terms of sizing, there's just a single size medium available which covers heads from 54 to 60 centimeters, though POC does include some different size pads in the box to help riders fine tune the fit. As for cost, well, it probably won't shock anyone to hear that at £350 or $400 or Euros, it ain't cheap. These kinds of niche top-end products rarely are though, right? Sadly, POC's signature fluorescent orange colorway is not an available option, so you will have to make do with either this Darth Vader inspired matte black or Stormtrooper matte white. And that's everything that there is to know about the new POC ProSend TT helmet. What do you think? Do looks matter if you're trying to be fast or would you use anything for those gains? Let me know in the comments below. I was in charge of picking a bike this month, so I've naturally gone for a superbike that looks like an absolute joy to ride on rolling and hilly terrain, which is my favorite. Really, I was pretty much watching every minute of the Giro mountain stages, and I started dreaming of the perfect bike for riding these routes. You know, a bit more recreationally than the pros do. Now, this Canyon Ultimate CFR has been built to be uber feathery, and it comes in on the scales at around 6.3 kilos, which makes it UCI illegal. That said, you could probably get it up to the weight limit for any sanctioned events, simply by fitting a set of deeper carbon wheels. And then if you needed to add more weight, I'd bet there are heavier saddles than that one. The saddle itself is the Sella Italia SLR C59. At just 61 grams, it is a weight weenie's dream, but you'd have to get your position dialed for the bare carbon shell to be comfortable. A Shimano Dura Ace DI2 group set provides the stopping and going, but if you wanted to be like Primoz Roglic, then I bet you could save some weight by going one by. Just don't go over any bumps. If you're not sure what I'm on about, then there's a great article over on bikeradar.com that took a look at the bike that Roglic switched to for the final couple of climbs of the Giro, which went, you know, pretty well. Back to the canyon, and the wheels are DT Swiss's PRC 1100 die cut Mon Sacheral. That's a very weighty name for a wheel set that is claimed to weigh just 1,266 grams. Now wrapping those wheels is a set of Schwalbe Pro 1 TT tires. So we'd say that this bike is hill climb ready. Let us know in the comments if you want to see more of this bike on the channel. Now over to Tom for a big box of TRP drivetrain bits. TRP are keen to show that your name doesn't need to begin with an S to succeed in the drivetrain wars with their new EVO 12 group set. Yes, a whole group set. While they've produced rear derailleurs and shifters before, this is the first time they've added cranksets and cassettes to the mix. There's no fancy wireless trickery here, just a good old cable actuated drivetrain that has a few features to make it stand out from the crowd. The key differentiators over the SRAM and Shimano equivalents are the shifter and rear derailleur. Let's start with the rear derailleur, which features a number of clever tools to help shifting performance and, importantly, keep drivetrain noise to a minimum. An instant silent clutch helps to reduce noise and chain slap, but it's TRP's unique hall lock that really sets it apart. Designed by Aaron Gwynn's longtime mechanic, John Hall, the hall lock stabilizes the derailleur on its B-knuckle, which is this bit here. This helps to prevent it swinging back and forward, helping to keep it nice and quiet when you're hammering through the rough stuff. To aid wheel removal, it can be turned off with a simple flick of a lever, and likewise the cage release spring tension for those F1 style wheel changes. Finally, it gets a fancy carbon cage to reduce weight and add some bling factor. Moving over to the shifter, and once again it packs a few features that make it stand out over the rest. The shifter lever, which lets you move to an easier gear, is not only angle adjustable like you'd find on some SRAM setups, but there's also a button to choose between a single shift or five upshifts in one go. The alloy crankset is pretty typical of what we'd expect for the price, with forged aluminium arms, a direct mount narrow wide chainring, and a big old 30mm spindle for maximum stiffness. 
If you want to drop some grams and a few more pounds from your bank account, then a carbon version is also available. The cassette mounts via Shimano's microspine standard and has a SRAM equaling 520% range with a 10 to 52 tooth spread. The top end of the cassette also mirrors SRAM's new T-Type cassette, with 44 and 52 teeth respectively for nice even jumps between gears. The two biggest cogs are made from 7,075 aluminium to save weight, while the other 10 are machined from a single piece of steel, which should help with durability. The 12 speed chain is made by KMC, while the Evo 12 is available in this rather stealthy black and silver finish, or if you really want to stand out from the crowd, a black and gold option. The whole group set starts from £1,036 for the black group set with alloy cranks, and I'll be strapping it onto my bike to put it through the ringer. So stay tuned for a full review on the channel and BikeRadar.com in the coming months. An eclectic mix as per usual. Now, if you liked this video, why don't you go out and check this one? It's an excellent one.